So as I was saying, uh, in C++ adds a capability that you can create a variable or an instance of something anywhere, unlike C. In C, you have to do it at the beginning of the block. In C++, you can do it anywhere. And because of that, there, um, it causes a problem with portability. And I'll tell you what, then, please avoid this. Um, so when you are writing the code, you write for int i set to 0, i less than, say, 30, and i plus plus. This is very common, and many of you do it. Okay? This is not a portable code. Why? Because different compilers of C++ interpret this and compile it differently. Some of compilers assume that int i is defined right before 4, so it's actually int i, and then i equal to 0. Okay? Some compilers say, no, it's not the case. Int is actually inside the for loop. So it's like this. Okay? Which means, in some compilers, at line 8, i is not defined because the for loop is over. In another compiler, in line 8, you have i. Which means, for example, I want to count to see how many times the for loop happened. And I want to do something like this. So I have another condition over here. So I have a condition that may end the for loop earlier. So I'm going to say int actual loops. OK? And I want to set it. So I'm going to say actual loops. Actual, not acute all. Okay. Okay, so actual loops. And I'm going to set this to i. So you compile this, it works perfectly, and everything's good. Then you move it to another compiler, it gives you an error that i is not defined. Okay? So never do that. Unless you know you're not going to do anything. You are in a small scope, and you want to do a quick loop, and you don't care what the counter is. You want to have an integer over there. You know you don't need the integer after. Then don't do it. Do it like that. It's fine. But if you are using the counter after the loop is over, then your code is not portable anymore. I myself always avoid it. Because why I do something that sometimes is iffy and sometimes it's not? Okay, so it's a good practice to take the int i out all the time. Make it like this. Why doing things that in different compilers is it's, it's interpreted differently? Just do it like this. Don't put it inside the for loop because it means different things in different compilers. That's all. Okay, so that was a point that I wanted to make. So um, uh, I need your attention. Now, let's say we don't have the C in and C out, OK? And we want to design our own class. And our, your attention here, it's important. This is an important lecture, so you can continue with the rest of it after. Um, uh, let's say we don't have the IO, uh, the, the input and output. And if I wanted to actually um, make my life easier, kind of, uh, because I didn't want the printf to be uh, a complicated printf to remember to be able to print stuff easily, I could have created a class of my own, and I call that class output. Okay, so I have a class called output. That class doesn't have any. It's a utility class. It doesn't have any data members. It just, it just has uh, different types of print statements so I can print stuff easily. So I could simply say void print prn, let's call it, int val. And of course, it's a, it's a constant thing, const. And because I wanted to use printf, I didn't know how to use, uh, I want printf to be easier. I'm going to indirectly call printf over there. So instead of having using namespace std over there, I'm going to have the, uh, uh, instead of have, having io stream, I'm going to have over here 
CSTDIO, standard input output. So I'm gonna say printf over here, and I'm gonna say percent %d, and I'm gonna put the value in here. So if I do something like this, essentially, I am writing a, um, um, a class to do my printouts. And because I know I can overload things, I can create a second function called PR and const, yada, 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 to print strings, let's say. And I can overload for doubles and anything you want to float. So keep writing stuff like that. And when I, therefore, when I want to print something, all I need to do is to write something like this. So instantiate the output. It's Farhad, so I'm going to call it f out, and I'm going to say f out dot print. My name is Farhad, and I am prn50. That's actually 53, but who cares? And then prn years old, and it goes up. So it, I know it sucks, but hey, print f because I don't have to put that format specifier; it just prints it for me. Okay. Now, this is all good. So no, let me just make sure it compiles. I don't want to do something that doesn't run. Yeah, so my name is Farhad, I'm 50 years old. Now, next thing I want to do to make it a little flow better. So it, what I'm going to do, let's save this to uh, io1.cpp. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make uh, these PRNs actually return the output. So what I'm going to do will be this. So instead of, it is the exact same thing. Instead, I'm going to say the PRN that is printing the val, it's going to return a constant uh, instance reference of the output. And I'm going to say return this at the end. OK? What good it's going to do? It's the exact same function. The difference is that it returns a constant reference of the object back, right? The good thing is that doing so, then this f out prn, what is it going to return? It's going to return the reference of f out, correct? Because of that, I can simply do this, correct? And I can do this. Now I'm getting there. It's actually getting better. OK? So now I don't have to keep writing f out. I'm going to say f out dot, and I'm going to keep going. OK? Any problem with this? No problem, right? It's just playing with the, so it is, this essentially works exactly like the other one. It's going to print the same thing. OK? So now. I know that I can actually overload operators, right? We learned that. So instead of actually calling these PRN, instead of calling these PRN, I'm going to actually call them operator. Same thing, right? Any difference? I just renamed the, the the PRN functions to operator left shift. That's left shift operator in binary. OK? Now I can actually change these with the operator's name. So it becomes like that. And this becomes like this. And this becomes like this. Doesn't that look familiar to you? Doesn't that look like C out? That is C out, ladies and gentlemen. There's no magic. They created a class. They called it O stream. And what they have done, they created, instantiated the O stream inside the header file. So whenever you say include IO stream, it creates a global object called C out. Because C out is console, you're going to learn in OP345 how to create extern, they call it. Using extern, you can create an actual global variable. That is every, so, so whenever you are including the first time, it instantiates it. The second time, it won't. It just reuses the first one. So by doing something like that, you have a global object of type O stream called C out, and you do all your outputs with it. OK? It'd be exact same with C in. I just change the name C in instead of that, do a scanf. Works the exact same way, absolutely no difference. Are we OK with this?
So that's the C out that you have dealt with and you work with and you're, you learned, okay? The reason I told you this was to kind of clarify that essentially the program you have written, so let's make this uh, iOS3.cpp. Okay, so essentially that's what you do when you write a program like this. Okay? It's the exact same thing, absolutely no difference. The, instead of writing that thing, I included IO stream in IO stream, they instantiate C in and C out, so I have access to it everywhere. Are we okay down to here? All right, so that's that. Now, wait a minute. Isn't that output a class? It is, right? Okay, so I can simply inherit the class and make it do the exact same thing into a file, right? So when I say C out, it actually writes into a file instead of, but there's a problem. When you say C out, it prints on a screen. Why, why did they create it? Why they didn't let you instantiate it? Because only you only have one console. You cannot have three consoles. Console is a unique thing. That's why they made it global. So when you say C out, it's console out. But file is not that way. You can have 50 different files that you want to write into, correct? So they cannot globally create one. You have to create it. If you wanted to design, if you wanted to inherit a class out of your output, to be able to write stuff into a file instead of writing on a console. What would you have passed to the constructor of the class? So the class name is file, okay? When you want to instantiate a file class and you want to write something into a file, what would have you passed to the constructor? File name. Correct. That's the logical thing. If I'm creating a class that is supposed to write in a file, I pass the file name to it, and that's exactly what it is. So, since essentially you can include the next thing, next level of hierarchy in the thing, and call it include f stream. Okay, but you have to instantiate f stream. So, are, are you printing into a file? So it's gonna be o f stream output f stream. Are you reading from a file? It's going to be I F stream, input F stream. So I'm going to say O F stream, okay? Call it, say, out file, okay? Now I'm going to, I, if I don't write anything, that doesn't, mean, that doesn't make sense. Because, wait a minute, I have a file, it doesn't have a name, it's impossible. Your file has, have to have a name. So in here, I'm going to call it, say, um, age report. <laughs> report.txt, okay? And simply in here, I'm gonna say out file. Because it's a child of C out, it does everything like C out. So if you know how to work with C out, you know how to work with this. I don't need to teach anything extra. All you need to do, instead of the screen, you are redirecting it into a file. You okay with that? All right, so if I actually do control F5 on this one and execute this, this is gonna be the output, nothing. Of course, because I'm writing in a file. So now if I actually look at the directory that I'm in, I have an age report. And if I open that age report, that's what it's in there. So it actually printed it into a file. It's as simple as that. You don't need to learn anything new. That's the beauty of object orientation. You already worked with C in. You know how to read? No problem. Instead of actually, so, um, oh, sorry, wrong thing I wanted to say. Um, so um, I'm going to call it uh, io5file.cpp. So if you want to actually uh, read from a file, what do you do? You create i f stream, and I'm going to call it in file, okay? And in here, I'm going to say, uh, 
uh, I need some some place to read it in. So so I'm gonna put over here SDR. Let's put over here. I don't know 128. Some size in there. Now I'm gonna say uh, exactly like seeing. I'm gonna say in file into SDR. Now I'm gonna say see out SDR. So what is it going to print now? Knowing that this is the content of my Knowing that this is the content of my file, when I do that, what is it going to print? You use your C in knowledge. So you said C in SDR, somebody typed the whole thing and hit enter. What would go into SDR? Please close your eyes and imagine that you wrote C in SDR, somebody typed that statement and hit enter. What's going to go into SDR? Put your programmer's hat, not the expectation. What actually happens? What is the delimiter for C in when you are reading a string? Only my is going to go into SDR because that's how CIN works, right? That's how CIN works. CIN only reads up to a space, and that's what it is. There is no hidden agenda behind it. That's how it's going to work out. So if I actually run this, if I go actually control F5, what I'm going to get in the output will be my. If I want to read everything one by one until the file ends, how do I do it? I simply say, while, when seeing cannot read, what happens? How do you find out if seeing wasn't successful? Seeing dot, why are everybody looking at me like this is the first time you're using this? Seeing dot what? You have written the code for it in your date. Fail, for heaven's sake. Fail, seeing dot fail. Did anybody do actually the date thingy? OK, so all you need to do, you're going to say while not in file dot fail, why it didn't, while it didn't fail, read it and put it in the string, and then see out it. And I'm for just for the heck of it, I'm going to go to new line every single one, single time. I'm going to come up over here, X. So it's going to read the first one, and it keeps going. OK, so I'm going to run this. My name is Fardan. I'm 50 years old, line by line. It read it line by line. It does everything C in does. And when it's finished, if you try to read it again, it's not going to work. Why? Because it failed. So if I actually want to read it again, I have to clear it exactly like C in. So if I want to do something with it, now after this, I know it's failed. But that's why it's here, right? So I have to do in file dot clear. OK? And in file dot, let me see. Seek forgetting, that, that is a method that in file has. Seek, it means jump to, OK? G is forgetting, get, OK? Not forget, <laughs> get. It's, it, it, G stands for getting, OK? So seek G, in file seek G, go to. Now I can t tell, go to the beginning of the thing. Uh, position, the first, uh, the position zero or something like that. And I can do that again. So it means go to the beginning of the file and read again. It's possible that that's not going to work, but it's OK. You'll see. And there you go. You see? So you actually passed that one, and then it wrote a my after. So I actually went back. I can keep going and going and go back and forth in the file. You can actually go that 0 is the address of the file. So if I say 10, it's going to go to the 10th character and start reading from there. So you can go back back and forth into the file and read whatever you want and whatever you want. 
if your files are comma separated exactly like date that you were doing stuff and you are passing commas and stuff like that, you can do the exact same thing. Ignore works exactly the same way. Get line works exactly the same way. Every single thing that works in C in and C out, there is anything that you had, it work in this. No difference. The only difference is that you already know how the user is supposed to enter it. So it gives you a relief. You don't have to talk to the stupid user and keep saying, oh, that's wrong, do it again. Oh, that's wrong, do it again. If you can't read it, you just stop and give, say, data corrupted, please fix the data file. The, the person who's giving you the data file should, have, should go on, like, on line 52. Like you, you tell what, which line it failed and you quit. You don't have to keep asking the user to re-enter it. Because they give you a format, you know the first one is name, comma, the second one is last name, comma, the list. So you simply read up to comma using get line instead of backslash n. You put the delimiter comma, it goes, and then you ignore the next one. It's very simple, okay? Play with it, and that's it. There is nothing else that I can tell you about files. There is one more thing that is you can open a file in two different ways, input and output. So if you create an IF stream, it's for reading. That object can only read. If you use OF stream, that object can only write. But there was a marriage between IF stream and OF stream, and the result was F stream. So F stream, that's only in C++. C++ has multiple inheritance. So it inherited IF stream and OF stream, putting it in an object called F stream, a class called F stream. Therefore, if you, oh, if you create the instance f stream, you can open the file for input or output or whatever you want. How you do that, this is the syntax for it. So if I wanted to read and write at the same time into something, this is io6file.cpp. If you want, so you simply say IF stream, but then after opening it, you have to mention, oh, by the way, I didn't close the file. Shoot. No shoot. No problem. It's object oriented. The person who wrote it put a closed statement in the destructor. Don't worry. When it goes out, the object gets destroyed, it closes it. You don't need to worry about closing it anymore. That's a beauty. Thing. So, because when they wrap up the thing, if you you can close it, you can say dot close. Any method that you think there should be there, it's there. Like this in file is opening age report. Maybe I want to use that in file to open another file. Sure, just say in file dot close, then in file dot open, open another one, and do whatever you want to do. All the things that you guess they are supposed to be there, they're there, and. Because of IntelliSense, put a dot behind it, and you'll see all the things it can do. So, but if you are doing F stream, then you have to mention. So I want to read. I'm going to say iOS scope resolution in. That's a constant thing that's set over there for input. It means I want to read it as in. Because we are in Windows, Windows is still DOS point something. OK? DOS 1. It actually differentiates between text and binary file. Okay? Linux is not like that. Everything's binary. They don't have a text file. But in here, if you actually wanted to read a binary, you, you should mention, hey, this is binary, which means I'm reading raw integers from it and I want to convert it or whatever. You are not doing it in here in this semester. It's next semester. Anything you want to add, you put over here a bar. Okay? Bar is a binary or. Okay? You don't need to know why, but just assume as, as or. So you're going to say, I want it to be, uh, I want it to be iOS in and iOS out. So I want to read and write. Or I want it to, I want to open this file to append stuff to it. Okay? And all the things that it can do, they are in here. Take a look at it. Go read it. iOS in, open. iOS out, writing iOS app to append, iOS trunk to truncate, which means you are opening for uh, writing, but there was something there. If there is something in a file, delete it, make it zero, so the file shrinks. This is good to create temporary logs, okay? You're, or you want to have a file to put stuff in to be able to make your uh, program do something or um, uh, be stateful if you want to do something like that. 
Um, ATE, it opens a file, but it opens it at end. iOS append always writes at the end. No matter what you do, it's going to always write at the end. Okay, if you seek anywhere, still it writes at the end. But if you do open ATE, it opens the file to write at the end, but you can always seek back and write in the middle if you want to, if you want to manipulate the file. Well, be careful. Seeking for writing is P because you are putting something in a file. So that's seek P. Seek G moves for reading. Seek P goes for writing. So IF stream has seek G. OF stream has uh, seek P to write, put something. So that's that one. And, the exa and if you want to know where you want in a file, like which position I'm writing in, you can go tell P. Tell P tells you exactly at which byte it's going to write. Also, if you want to find out what is the size of a file, open it for reading, then move to the end, seek to the end of the file, go look at the seek function, and you'll see it's iOS end. When you say iOS end, it jumps to the end. Then say tell P. Tell G. So it's going to tell you exactly which location is at the end of the file, and that's the size of your file. All the things that you can do. You're not going to do all those things here. It's going to be, but well, for now, you're just reading and writing from a file like C in and C out. So these are three, four, five that I'm telling you. Anyway, sky's the limit. It's just, remember, anything you did in C in and C out, you, would, you do it in this one. So if you want to open for reading and writing, that's iOS in and write. If you want to open for reading and overwriting, in and out and truncate, OK? If you want to write for in and out and appending, and in and out and append. If you want to only open for overwriting, it's out and, and, and trunk. OK? So you just add these together. All those features will be added to what you're doing. OK? You can add these things to OF stream too. But in OF stream, you cannot say iOS in. It doesn't understand. Because OF stream is only capable of writing. If you want the read write at the same time, you have to use the grandchild. That is F stream. That's it. That's files. Have fun. So, any questions about files? I told you 15 minutes, I kept my promise. It's not a difficult thing. Because of inheritance, I simply tell you whatever you use in the IFC in and C out, you can just use it here. As simple as that. It only applies it to a file. OK? Now, let me open my email. Actually. Can you give me the questions one by one so I can explain it? Let me save this. There are a few things that I wanted to talk about and the important questions that uh, uh, he asked me. What was the first one? Uh, listen to me. Important. Sorry, I have to attract your attention. Please, listen to me, everyone. It's very important. You create setter and get, first of all, reusing your code, OK? I have seen in the workshop that it says demonstrate how to reuse your code. You just wrote one thing, and you recalled it some, yes, I reused my code. You have to keep doing it, OK? Which means at any place you see repetitive code, you have to write a piece of, as soon as you see, even if it's one line that you keep writing over and over, put that in a private method private member function, always. So if something's getting repeated, pack it into a function, put it somewhere. Don't repeat your code, OK? If you see there are three variables that you are keep setting it to three different values, don't write three lines of code. Write a set function that receives three arguments, sets these three data members, and reuse that function over and over and over and over, OK? That's number one. Number two, when you have a setter or getter function, OK? A setter sets a member data, a getter that gets the value of a data, OK? That's not for outsiders to use only. Every single time you want to use a data member, be obsessive about it. Use the method, not directly accessing the property. So even if you want to print the name of the employee, and you have a function that returns the name, use the function. Don't just go directly and print the name. Why? Because when you use the function to access the data members, if three years from now you want to apply a rule to accessing the data, 
You don't have to go search through all your code and see where did I use that data. You simply go to the accessor, modify the accessor, and whoosh, everything gets updated. Because you obsessively always use the function, you are sure that the rule that I just applied will be applied to all the code. And I don't have to go search everywhere and see where is it modified. OK? That was it. What was the other question? Uh-huh. When you are including a header file, do not just include just in case. In every file, look and see what is used in that file and only include those. Never ever include something into a header file and say I'm not going to include it into CPP because I want it to go through the header file. Never do that. For example, if you are printing something in a CPP file, look, do you have I.O. stream in your header file? If you don't, don't include it into header file. Only include it into CPP. Include your libraries only in the file they are used, not indirectly through header files. Never do that. Always include the header files exactly in where they are used. And that makes a clear code to compile. Oh, when you have, you want to create a virtual destructor, OK? You want to create a virtual destructor. And you want to put it in an interface. Virtual destructors cannot be pure. You cannot say virtual destructor equal to 0. It doesn't work. A virtual destructor must have an empty body. There is a problem. Interfaces are only header files. They don't have CPPs. OK? Either create the empty body inside the header file, they'll compile, see if it works. If it didn't work, you have to create a CPP file for your interface and just create an empty destructor in it only for sake of having a virtual destructor inter in your interface. What was interface? An interface is uh, an abstract base class that has only pure virtual methods. Okay? Usually these guys don't have any CPP files. But if you get trouble because you had an empty body in line, then create a CPP file and only put a destructor in there. And that's it. What was the next question? Oh, for the uh, string length, the string length question that I asked, that's extremely important. It's pointer arithmetic. Now, when you say strlen, okay, of anything, if I say str over here, okay, and this is my str, if I have something like this, if by mistake, instead of, if I say plus one, the length of is 3 plus 1 becomes 4, correct? If you put the plus 1 over here, what happens is that you are telling go to the address of str plus 1, which is address of b. So you are actually getting the length of this. So the result will be 2, not 4. Because you are saying go later in the thing and get the length. That's a very common mistake that people do and they say, why I get segmentation fault? I uh, measured the length of the string, then I allocated memory and copied it into it. Because they put the plus over here, they get two bytes short instead of adding one for the null byte. And it keeps crashing on them. It's a very common mistake. Be careful about it. Anything else it was there? That was it. OK. It was beautiful questions. I loved it. Thank you. Um, so that's it. Uh, let me stop the recording. Anybody, any questions down to here? All right.